Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Everything is Bad New Fangled Motion Picture Show. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the New Fangled Motion Picture Show. I am Niall. And I'm Nolan. And we're going to be doing a review of Hotel Artemis. Uh, we're going to do our normal thing, which is where we do a spoiler-free review at the beginning. And then we give you a spoiler warning. And then we go more in depth into it after that. Um, not that there's really a whole lot to spoil with this movie. There was no like big reveals or big twists. No, nope. like you know everyone's intentions like really early on, and the movie is just watching it unfold basically. Yeah. To me, the biggest reveal was honestly when Jeff Goldblum shows up, just because I forgot he was in the movie. And it, it wasn't anything to do with, like, the story. It was just like, oh, yeah, Jeff Goldblum's in this. This uh, movie actually has a pretty good cast. Yeah. Uh, um, if not well-known, if not necessarily great. Um, I mean, there's some great actors on here. Uh, Jeff Goldblum, Sterling K. Brown. Zachary Quinto. Jodie Foster, Zachary Quinto. Um, and then there's other actors that are well-known, like Charlie Day and Sofia Boutella. <laughs> Sophia Botella though is not she's well known but not for necessarily good reasons. Yeah, well, she's not a she's gotten better over she's the got, years. She has gotten better, but man, uh, a lot of her not movies like are the, Yeah, she's not really a great actress, but you hire her because you need someone to do some like martial arts and acrobatics. Yeah. Uh because she's capable of all that stuff. Yeah, you might remember her from such movies as The Mummy. Yeah. Well, she first came on the scene, I think, in um, Kingsman. Yeah, or she was Gazelle, which yeah. she was fine in because she didn't speak. She did speak. Very she little. A, she didn't have a whole lot of lines. She spoke she very little. Speak. She was a very, very quiet character. Um, yeah, I think that was the first thing that people really knew her from. Just looking at her page here, it looks like she did I'd some, forgot, some I forgot. I forgot she was in Star Trek Beyond. Um, she's that alien with the white and black skin. Oh yeah, uh, she's pretty much covered up. <laughs> you don't really realize it's her. I'd forgotten she was in that. Yeah, and then she was in Atomic Blonde, which was her. She was not great in. Um, she wasn't in a whole lot though, was she? She well, I mean, she was. She was the. Oh, yeah, yeah. She was that other agent. Yeah. That female agent that hooked up with uh, Shirley Theron. Yeah. And then the Mummy, where she was just. The whole movie was just yeah. To be fair, the whole movie was just the worst, but she was not good. Um, but anyway, so uh, Hotel Artemis. Um, if you like the idea of like underworld society, like like kind of like the stuff in the background of John Wick, um, you'll I think you'll enjoy this movie because it's very much in that vein of like yeah we're all criminals but there are rules you know right you gotta follow the rules you gotta follow the rules so hotel artemis is a membership or a by membership um hospital hospital for criminals and <clears throat> built in the old it's it's inside the old hotel artemis which is like supposedly like a shut down hotel no longer operating in la, in LA. And it's aggressively art deco like yeah. it's just very very art deco um which is i mean i i like that aesthetic a lot so i i enjoyed that yeah so jody foster plays the character called the nurse who is the doctor there and then um dave batista is everest everest because he's so big he's like a mountain yeah, and he's 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 the orderly orderly and security right of the of the place. And Dave Batista was great in the movie. Yeah, they they have this like funny little. I really like Dave Batista. It's like a little uh, this relationship they have. <laughs> I don't know, it's just funny. She's like calls him fat. He's he's clearly not fat. And he's like, I'm not fat. I'm just yeah, a big he's, guy. He's like <laughs> muttering under his. He's just like muttering under his breath. Like I've been dieting for months and I'm not fat. I'm, I'm not just fat. kind of no, a big guy. All, all this like. is. Yeah, <laughs> it's, just, it's just it's kind of funny. Yeah, uh, and jo I mean Jodie Foster plays 
if her character is kind of like weird and quirky. Everyone, every, every one of the movies kind of weird and quirky. It's kind of well, the point. Well, she has this anxiety disorder where she hasn't left this building for like 20 years. Yeah. And she's been running the Hotel Artemis for decades now. And um, so, yeah, and it's just, it follows like just these criminals that come in to the hotel for treatment for whatever and um just their interactions and um in the meantime there's this huge citywide riot going on outside yeah over water because there's not enough water sixth place in the future by the way yeah like it's it's like 10 years 10 years in the future something like that i think it was it was a 2028 yeah something like that i mean the the reason for the riot's not really important just like that it's getting nearer to the city or to the hotel and that like it's dangerous to be outside Uh, right pretty much the whole movie takes place inside the hotel yeah and just like um a few hallways and a couple of rooms yeah uh because they're most of the hotels abandoned and they just operate like on the on the penthouse level right and so each guest has their own room which is like a little hospital room with um you know all the hospital equipment and stuff in it and they have 3d printers to the print organs apparently yeah um but yeah so that's going on uh there's scheming and stuff because it's that kind of a movie you find out everyone's intentions really early on in the movie Um, or at least you can figure them out yeah uh yeah you figure that out really really early on um and yeah so i mean i i enjoyed the movie i did too um i mean it's not i mean it's it's not the best hollywood action or, you know uh summer action movie that'll be out this summer i'm sure it's actually not even that much of an action movie there's not a whole no. lot of action in there there's a lot less action than i was actually expecting yeah based on the trailer based on the trailer because that they, might be part of why the the movie's getting sort of middle reviews because it's not what people are expecting it's, yeah it to be. the trailer made it look like there's a whole lot of action but really there's not a lot um it's it's there and what's there is good uh, but it's kind of like a little bit in the beginning and then like a little at the end and the middle is it, it's not boring by any means it's just not action filled right um but yeah I'd, I'd still recommend you go check it out uh there were i counted them there were 10 people in our theater other than us when we saw it and i mean yeah. it, it was a it was a matinee but it was also like after lunch on a saturday so you know they, yeah and where we live people tend to go to movies in the afternoons on weekends because it's so hot in the summer yeah so yeah that's really telling of how well the movie's doing i think but it was in the big theater it was in, in the, the big screening it room it was in the the largest the the largest uh, is, auditorium at the surprising they might have they might have been expecting a bigger show and maybe like in the evening it, they did fill up but maybe. those matinee that matinee didn't didn't have that many people yeah. in it um of course what are the other shows out i don't know but yeah there's not a, like a lot else okay. out like come that came out this weekend that's can we talk about draws. for a minute can we talk about how much zachary quinto looks like freddie mercury when he has a mustache oh yeah he has this mustache and his hair is like that or it's like shaved pretty close in this and um it's like like cut just, pretty close to his scalp and he just he looks like freddie mercury with this mustache yeah it's really yeah it, it was kind of it was a little off-putting when he first walked in but yeah so uh but yeah so before we before we get to spoilers i recommend you go see it um if you don't get a chance to don't stress over it but it's a good movie worth seeing yeah i i enjoyed it uh so spoiler warning yep henceforth are spoilers right so i don't not a whole lot to spoil but um yeah basically um sterling k brown his character and his brother waikiki in honolulu yeah so when you when you show up when you check into the hotel you're given um a code name based on the room so the the theming of this hotel back in the day was like each room in the penthouse was themed to a different exotic locale 
and so they have this huge mural showing it off and it that's what the hotel was originally and so they they, they kind of s- stayed with that theming and so to keep everyone everyone's anonymity I guess, they they're assigned a name and so Waikiki in Honolulu Sterling K Brown's character and his brother they're robbing a bank as the movie begins and they can't get into the vault yep uh so they take the they or um he realizes that because of the riots going on all, all the wealthy people are sending their house servants their servants to go drop off um you know expensive stuff at the bank and so everyone that's in the lobby has stuff on so he they take all their everything and um his brother takes this pin off of this guy which is actually hiding some diamonds that belong to the biggest crime lord in the city who's jeff goldblum's character yep so anyway they they get shot by the his brother gets shot by the police and stuff and so they go to the hotel artemis and check in and there's also um when they check in there's um this uh drug run or um gun runner i mean Played by Charlie Day. Yeah, Charlie. Played by Polko. Yeah, and then um, the character of Nice, who played is by, Sophia Botello. which is fitting because she's supposed to be this French assassin, right? And so, um, like she and um, what's Sterling K. Brown's character? Which one was he? Honolulu. Waikiki. Well, he's Waikiki. Yeah, his brother's Honolulu. His brother's, okay, so they have like some history. Of, they know each other and. She's actually there to murder um, Jeff Goldblum's character. The wolf? Or... Yeah, they call him the, the wolf of L.A. or something like that. Yeah, he's credited as Everest. Or not Everest, as um, Niagara. Yeah, Niagara, because his codename is Niagara. Uh, that's the room he's in. And so, um, but everyone calls him like the wolf of of New York. Or what? not, New of York, L.A. LA where it takes place and so she's actually there to kill him so she like fakes a gunshot wound to get in and then but she's a member so and she, she arranges for him to be injured so he'll yeah, need to go there right and then she shoots herself in the arm to have a reason to be there right and zachary quinto plays uh his son and he's an asshole kind of a fuck up <laughs> and uh yeah so at the end of it all um, that guy, Jeff Goldblum's character, Niagara gets killed, and then um, because of <coughs> events in the movie, the um, the dude's brother gets dies because he's on life support, and the power goes out. Mm-hmm. And um, Zachary Quinto blames the nurse for the death of uh his father, and so he's like has his goons busting in breaking into the place and attacking them at the end there and they're everyone's trying to escape and it's only like and like uh de batista goes to hold them off and he's like attacking him with a fire axe yeah like i wouldn't want to face de batista unarmed but with a fire axe yeah and um he's a big guy sophia batella is holding them off and she's kicking their asses and stuff but they they all manage to overwhelm them all and then like it's just sterling k brown he, he has a car stash somewhere so he gets out with the nurse but she decides to stay um because she first of all she has this anxiety about being outside but also she just she's a doctor at heart she just helps people um yes and i mean so and throughout the movie it's it's uh they mention that this sort of facility exists in a lot of cities um well like so niece Sophia Battelle shows off her wrist because if you remember you get a chip implanted that lets you pass the security yep gate you and gotta so scan she, it to get in and she's got like 12 of them going up her arm these scars for the implants yep and she's pointing out like this one's from this one's in Paris and this one's in New York and this one's in you know yeah wherever and at at the end um the the nurse tells Waikiki to go to Vegas where there's 
was it the old Apache Hotel is what she said yeah so there's uh, one in Vegas called the Apache apparently but um yeah and um he so he gets away with the diamonds that his brother accidentally stole yeah so I mean it's it, it's it's a it is what it is I mean it's a, yeah. it's a pretty good movie um I will probably I'm, I'm not I'm glad I saw it but I'm probably never gonna purposely watch it again yeah like, I'm, ne- I'm never gonna seek out watching the movie if it's something like you know if I were to flip through the channels on TV and find it there if there's nothing else to watch I'd probably watch it um Excuse me. Yeah, I and I probably won't buy the Blu-ray or anything, but um, it was definitely uh, worth watching at least once. It's one of those movies that doesn't have like a whole lot of rewatchability. I think just because yeah. you like most thrillers don't yeah. have any rewatchability. Yeah, you know I mean what's it, gonna happen. it was worth buying a matinee ticket, a bucket of popcorn, and a stale hot dog. The hot dog was fine. The bun was the bun was stale. stale. The buns were very stale. Those were some bad buns. Yep. But uh, anyway, so that's that's our thoughts on Hotel Artemis. Uh, next week we'll be doing a review on Incredibles two, right? Probably a better movie, if not a obvi- definitely a higher grossing movie. But yeah, and we'll also be seeing Tag. Um, don't know what order those are going to come in. Yeah, oh, next weekend's going to be busy for us. Very busy. And also Thursday night, we can't we can't see movie Thursday night like we like to do because yeah, we got Rift Tracks. Rift Tracks. Space Mutiny. If you have never seen a Rift Tracks live, highly recommend. Yeah. You uh you're, you're missing really out. missing out if you've never seen a Rift If you're a if you're a big movie like general cinephile and movie fan and you've never seen a Rift Tracks live, you are really doing yourself a disservice. If you don't know what Rift Tracks is, it's Mystery Science Theater 3000. It's the same guys. Yep. Uh, just this this new format. Yep, and they they riff movies live. It's live broadcast. Where we're at, it's an hour long. It's an hour tape delay because time zones. Yeah. But in most places, it's a live stream of uh, wherever they're filming it, it's Tennessee it's, or whatever. It's always it's always at yeah that this courthouse in Nashville or courthouse uh this old like movie house in Nashville. Yeah. Like, one of those old styles was like the big, the single huge screen with a stage in front of it. Yeah. Because they're up on the stage. So they have to do it in locations like that because they have to be up on a stage. Yeah, so it has to be one of the places that's like an old stage theater turned into a movie theater. Uh, but So there's not a whole lot of options for yeah. them. But they do in this, it's this really huge, beautiful uh, movie house in Nashville. Yeah. So like I said, if you've not, if you've not gone to a Roof Tracks Live, highly recommend it. Um... We will not be doing a review of Space Mutiny. No. But we will do our damnedest to squeeze in somewhere in the next weekend our reviews of Incredibles 2 and Tag. Yeah, um, we'll see when that happens because uh, we're moving. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's going to take up. Uh, but time. then. Uh, freaking Jurassic World, man, is the week after that. Is that movie The King? Is that. Uh, uh ugh. no no um i the sicario day of the soldado looks good look it looks really good and by all accounts the first sicario was really good i never saw it i i had intended to see it and it just didn't happen yeah for me. just stuff came up or whatever I mean, I, I love Benicio Del Toro. Um, so maybe we'll make it a point to watch uh, Sicario, and then we'll go see that and do a review on that as well, because that's the only thing coming out that that week, because we're not seeing Uncle Drew. And then when we get into J- July, we got Ant-Man and the Wasp, um, Equalizer 2, New Mission Impossible, and T-Titans go to the movies. So that's what we got coming up. Um... So if you like the review of Motel Artemis, go check out our other reviews. Uh, we give our opinions on them. No nonsense reviewing from the angle of people who just enjoy watching movies. 
Yeah. Um, and also check out uh, we live stream over on Twitch. I know we're playing through Jack 2. Uh, Twitch.tv slash everything underscore is underscore bad. Um, may or may not be streaming this week or next week. Normally it's Sunday nights and these weekends are going to be rather busy for us. So, uh, And then also check out our other videos on our channel. We archive old streams, things like that. So other movie reviews. So check out stuff out there. And until next time, thanks for listening to my dulcet tones. Bye. Toodles. Thank <laughs> you.